Hello friends, I am Dr. Nivedita Dhingra and I am a hematologist, oncologist and bone marrow transplant physician at Max Hospital Vaishali. Today what I'd like to talk to all of you about is a blood disorder called thalassemia. So thalassemia is a blood disorder where hemoglobin production is impaired and affected individuals have anemia. Now as you all know our blood contains hemoglobin. This hemoglobin molecule carries oxygen to various parts of the body which gives us our energy. And this hemoglobin molecule is composed of a heme part which is basically an iron containing complex and then we have the protein part or the globin chains. So thalassemia is basically a genetic defect in this globin part of the hemoglobin molecule. And as we are all very aware that in our body, the genes that we get are paternally derived, we get them from our parents and one copy comes from the mother, whereas the other copy of any gene comes from the father. So in individuals with thalassemia, what happens is that the, uh, there is a genetic defect in the globin part of the molecule. When one copy of the gene is only affected, either derived from the mother or father, then the condition that results is known as thalassemia minor. So this is basically like the name suggests thalassemia minor, this is a very mild illness. Individuals who only carry one affected copy of the uh, defective gene, they have a mild illness where they can have only mild anemia. They may not even realize that there are carriers of thalassemia unless they are specifically tested. But what is significant and what needs to be noted is that if two individuals who are carrying a single single copy of the defective gene or two thalassemia minor individuals, they decide to get married, then in every pregnancy there is a chance that the baby, the, uh, the fetus will carry both the affected gene copies and that would result in an illness that is known as thalassemia major. So is there a curative option? Yes, there is a curative option for thalassemia and that involves bone marrow transplantation. Now children with thalassemia, if they have real brothers or sisters or siblings who are not affected by this condition, we do a simple blood test called HLA typing for the patient as well as all brothers and sisters. So if a matched, fully HLA matched sibling donor is available, what we strongly advocate is that a bone marrow transplant should be done which offers the chance for lifelong cure and a life of thalassemia free life. Uh, but if the child does not have any siblings or if any of the siblings does not turn out to be a match, is that the end of the road? No, that is not the end of the road. There are voluntary donor registries both Indian as well as international where a search can be done and if a fully matched donor is identified, we can still offer a transplant with very good outcomes. And now recently with more advances in the field of bone marrow transplantation, bone marrow transplant can be offered from family donors who are not fully HLA matched also. That is known as a haploidentical transplant and that is also showing very promising results. So transplant offers the child a chance for thalassemia free life and to get rid of uh, all the over a period of time the child can uh, get back to normal uh, life and enjoy a healthy uh, long life. So one thing friends that I would really like to stress is that thalassemia is actually a preventive, uh, preventable public health problem. So how can we do that? Now if two individuals are looking to get married what they can do is that they can go for premarital counselling. So by means of a simple blood test called hemoglobin HPLC, you can find out whether you are a carrier of thalassemia or not. And in northern India, the prevalence of thalassemia minor or whom we identify as thalassemia carriers is surprisingly very high. So for two individuals, young people get looking to get married, if they go for this test and they get to know that both of them are thalassemia minors, then when they get pregnant, they, we can diagnose whether the fetus in utero, whether the fetus is affected with thalassemia major or not. So at 12 to 12, uh, 10 to 12 weeks of pregnancy, by a simple procedure known as chorionic villus sampling, we can take some tissue from the fetus and do some genetic tests on it to identify whether the unborn baby is suffering from thalassemia major or not so that the couple can take an informed decision whether they wish to continue with the pregnancy. 
Apart from that, for couples who have one child afflicted with thalassemia, it is strongly advocated that they undergo a genetic test to identify what mutation the child uh, affected with thalassemia is having so that in subsequent pregnancies, again through the process of chorionic villus sampling, we can find out whether the next baby is also affected or not. So this uh, is very important to know and to note that thalassemia can be prevented through prenatal diagnosis. So it is important to understand that through these simple measures, we can actually prevent the birth of a thalassemic child. If a bone marrow transplant is done within the first 5 to 6 years of life, then the chances of success are close to 90%. So friends, in the end, what I would like to say is that we have come a long way in managing thalassemia. There have been a lot of advancements in the field of blood transfusion therapy. A lot of new medications have come up for iron chelation. And there have been a lot of advancements in the field of bone marrow transplant. So much so that a transplant can now be offered to a large majority of children suffering from thalassemia with good outcomes. So uh, please do not lose hope. With all these advancements in medical science, even children suffering from thalassemia major can lead healthy, happy and fulfilling lives. Thank you.